Well, <laughs> good morning, good morning. How good are we? Yeah, Hospitality Hints, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Yeah, look, I've got next to me, Mr. Simon Parsons. <laughs> Simon, how the morning, how the devil are you, first of all? Hey, well, well, thank you for inviting me on. That's okay, mate. No problem at all. Um, first of all, guys, gosh, happy new year. First show of 2021. Bang, where did that go? Yeah, almost into the first week, aren't we? Gosh, six days in. Uh, cool. Yeah, 6th of January 2021. Happy New Year. Are we still allowed to say Happy New Year? Yeah, on 6th of January? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm going to say it anyway. Happy New Year. First one on the show. Welcome, 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 guys. Um, welcome to the podcast, live podcast. Obviously, you can catch that all on our Last Man Standing. So, yeah, go along and have a look at that. So those people who don't know myself, my name is Nigel Mann, M A N, -N just for the podcast. Uh, if you don't know where if you don't know who I am, basically, gosh, where have you been for the last two months? Yeah, we're two months in. Uh, go along to LinkedIn, go along to all your sort of social media, type in Nigel M Nigel Mann, and you'll find me there. For those people who want to contact me by email, it's nigel.man at hospitalityrecovery.co.uk. And thank you for all the people that basically, you know, over Christmas, New Year, and certainly into New Year for basically the show. Uh, welcome, first of all, to all those people basically on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you're getting this podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know lots of people basically are tuning in on the new one, which is Brexit and EMCA, which goes out to the American market. Uh, a little little warning, first of all, to the, <laughs> the little people. Uh, this is basically a live broadcast. Um, yeah, you know, if, if you are listening to me, little people, put your earbuds in. Uh, yeah, move that laptop to another room. It's not usually a sweary show, but you might hear some Anglo-Saxon words that you don't explain over the dinner table tonight. So usually for myself, I must admit, but uh, not usually from the guests. But there you go. That's that's that's, that's the way it goes. Um, guys, yeah, if you're coming in, basically, I can see people coming in. I'll come along and say hello to you in, in a moment. Um, but people coming in, say hello. Yeah, you know, put in there your location. It's good for the six uh, later. And if you're watching back on replay, basically an R or a replay, um, just so we know that you're watching it on replay. And thank you to those people that do, especially the American markets that are, are behind. So comments and questions, thoughts. Uh, we've got some in Parsons talking about recruitment today. So please pop those in um, and basically bring those through. So let's go and say hello to a couple of people as they're just sort of drifting. Gosh, gosh, my gosh, it's all, gosh, it's, everybody's there today. Um, yeah, yeah. Jason McKeown. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Quizman. Yeah. Good, good to see you both. Yeah, good to see you too, Jason. Yeah, good to oh, see okay. you. Yeah, morning, morning. Yeah, uh, world famous Simon. There you go. Well, thanks, <laughs> Jason. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, perhaps you put a capital S in front of Simon, you know? So there you go. Happy days. Uh, Billy, second, yeah, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, who's on? Andrew Bettig. Hello, guys. Yeah, nice photo there, Andrew. Yeah, he's changed his photo. I, I, I don't recognize him. Yeah, here's my mom, Simon. I told you she's my critic. Yeah, you know, <laughs> good morning. Yeah, Sheila, man. Yeah, you just, just, it's on like my background, mom. Yeah, you know, I, I like to wave my arms and swing in my chair, and she'll criticize that later. So, yeah. She's my there's, there's my critic already on there. Yeah, good morning. She'll, she'll turn off for five minutes. So she doesn't understand recruitment. So that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Everton. Good morning. Good morning. Gosh, they're all coming in today, aren't they? Yeah. You know. Um, Owen, basically, yeah, good morning. You can tell it's lockdown, can't you? You can tell it's lockdown. Yeah, nobody's got enough all else to do apart yeah. from talk to us guys. Happy New Year. Yeah, wow, love your kitchen. Yeah, JBS, it's, it's almost as good as yours, sir. Yeah, you know, you know, those photos you sent me between Christmas and New Year. Yeah, you know, happy days to you. Uh, let me just basically bring on a few more people. Long time no speak, nice. No, Malcolm Morris, gosh, yeah. Hope you're well. Yeah, I spoke to Malcolm for ages. Yeah, uh, give me a call later. You know my number, so quite good. Or else I'll give you a call. Jay said likewise, and so they and so it goes on uh robbie harman great watch just keep them coming guys uh simon a question will the traditional recruit agency modern change in the future oh hold your questions there jbs hold your questions sir yeah it's typical jbs you know what i mean so there you go right so simon parsons let me bring him on yeah okay first of all let me change the title simon just so people know you're so basically yeah founder of sp connect hospitality recruitment and basically through so first of all simon welcome welcome sir happy new year to you yeah happy, you. New, happy, you. happy new year to sp connect i know we i know we jumped on a meeting yesterday with the guys but uh i'll say once again just for the viewers happy new year um first of all simon parsons who is simon parsons just give us a quick overview yeah so um happy new year to everyone and uh thank you very much for inviting me on nigel much appreciated um, albeit a little bit nerve wracking, as I said. Um, so, yeah, I've been, uh, uh, I guess, the founder of SP Connect, which we found nearly four years ago now. Um, I've been in recruitment about 14 years. Um, I had uh, a couple of long term other careers before that, military, 
since I was in the RAF for I think, seven or eight years, uh, and then British Airways for 13 years, something like that. So um, had a couple of careers before I fell into recruitment, and uh, yeah, um, been in it ever since. All mass, you know, my, my passion is hospitality. Uh, having been a chef in the military, as I mentioned, um, and when I came into recruitment, um, I automatically sort of leaned towards hospitality recruitment, and that's what I've done my whole career in recruitment, so 14 years, uh, recruitment across different sectors within the, the, the hospitality sector, so uh, grab and go, um, yeah. hotels, uh, you know, every, everything in between, you know, casual dining, fine dining, pubs predominantly, but uh, yeah, we do, um, SP Connect predominantly do sort of operations, HR, marketing, uh, central function roles, um, anywhere up from sort of mid-level uh, general management up to old level, really. Brilliant. Okay. So, so so most people are now looking at you, Simon, and going, oh, he's a recruiter. Yeah. You know, let's let's throw eggs at this guy. You know, I mean, let's, let's just, let's just, prove, yeah, let's, let's just prove in the stocks, you know. He's he's one of those guys that takes our fees and God knows what, you know. Let, yeah. let, let's, 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 let's try and put that to right today, you know. Let's just, uh, yeah, because there's ones out there that do that and there's ones that don't, let's face it. You know what I mean? So, cool. So, so let's talk about, let's talk quickly about that year that was, you know, that year that we don't mention, that you sort of, you know, that year we, we missed out. So, so how, how, how was uh, that year we don't mention for you simon yeah so 2020 was um uh, okay we were talking about it offline but uh, uh, in so many ways uh, the most difficult year that we've had uh, certainly as a business uh, uh, and both for myself as well emotionally um uh, you know i think i've gone on record on my posts admitting that you know i've cried more than once uh, into a uh, either a beer or a glass of wine or just on my own really it was Certainly when it's, uh, you know, we were into going into year three for us. So, yeah, going into year three. Um, we had a great start to the year. We'd had a brilliant year two. Um, Mark joined me as a, as a, as a, a business partner and um, we, were, we were flying. And then Boris, those infamous words from Boris when he said, you know, uh, I advise you not to go to pubs and restaurants um, for the foreseeable future. Um, in fact, the next day, my phone has never rang so much, but unfortunately, it was it was every client and every kind of everything that we had in our pipeline being stopped. Um, and that was it. The, 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 it fell off a cliff is probably the best way of putting it. And it was a really scary time. Um, we, I guess, needed to sort of take a step back and, and just uh, rationalise what was going on. Um, for me, that initial first few months was really difficult emotionally. Um, I've not experienced that sort of thing before. Um, new to sort of owning a business, really. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we we took decisions. Maybe we took a lot of wrong decisions, not right decisions, but we took a decision to to step back and really try and understand what our clients wanted from us, what our candidate um, network needed from us yeah. and how we could help um and that wasn't financially driven more uh it was driven from a, a place of we wanted to to help our clients because they've been very good to us we wanted to support other people because i could see that people were hurting as bad as i was um and we we, we set to work on that so we got involved with an nhs project harry uh, who were moving displaced hospitality candidates into the food retail sector, which was hugely successful. Um, as you know, that, that, this is how we started talking. I, I began posting on LinkedIn, yeah. and I guess uh, some would say bearing my soul, but just trying to be very honest and but, but upbeat with people and saying, "Look, you're not alone. You, we, you know, I'm. You don't know me, but come and talk to me. I, I, you know, I'm feeling the same as you're feeling. Let's 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 get through this together." You know, we did we did lots of stuff in terms of um, you know free advice, LinkedIn support. Um, we got involved with the coffee club that you originally set up, uh, Nigel, which I know we'll probably talk about later on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we just tried to, to offer support and, and and be upbeat about the situation that everybody had found themselves in. And I think the biggest thing for me was that I hadn't seen it coming. I was watching it on the news, but I genuinely didn't see it coming. And when it hit me, it hit me like a freight train. Yeah, as, 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 as in most businesses, I mean, I, I, I always think of last year as basically 
the year where it was bloody scary. I mean, you know, let's face it, hospitality just collapsed, didn't it? Yeah, the 20, 23rd of March was, yeah, was, will always be a date in my mind that quite clearly, you know, that, that's when we shut effectively. I know we had a few sort of L2, L1, L2 and Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3, Tier 4. But uh, I think that was the time when basically, you know, it, 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 it all collapsed. And I, I never saw that coming. I mean... I was with um, Welcome Break, yeah, this time last year, and, you know, standing in front of a load of people saying, you know, guys, we've had a fantastic year, double-digit growth, and quite clearly we're going to have a fantastic year. Then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, I mean, September for me, it, it, it all fell away properly. So, but I always think it's an exciting time. I always think it's an exciting time that quite clearly, you know, pe people have brought technology forward, people have... And, and I must admit, my first three months, I mean, I was, I was saying just for a common line here, is, is was bloody hard. It really was. It was, all of a sudden you go from 100%, yeah, to absolutely doing nothing, you know, and but to get used to that. Was... To give you some numbers, though, we, we were 92% um, down, like for like. That's oh. what we were as we went into COVID, well, yeah. COVID moving through. Um, oh. And we recovered to probably um, 60, 55% down, like for like, you know, but it's been a it's been a challenge, and I think you know, make no bones. It, it, whether I was a recruiter or I, whether I was it, an operator or whether I was in HR, yeah. you know, I agree with you that that the the, the positives have far outweighed the negatives. You know, yeah. take if the yeah. business had gone under, I'd still be saying this that that through through the adversity, I've met so many amazing people. I've yeah. met I've I've, I've been you know, had people support me that, you know, I didn't even know before the pandemic, you know, yeah. who have who've given their time to talk me through, advise me, just be a shoulder, an ear to, to listen to. And I think that, and, and because I've been able to do that as well through my the medium of LinkedIn and my network and help people into jobs that, you know, I'm not getting paid for. We put three or four people into roles with our clients because it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, they were the right person for the job. The, you know, nobody's going to pay a recruiter a fee in, when the, the, when cash is king and, and, and all of that. But yeah. we would, you know, from that, th those positive things far outweigh the negative of what happened to the business, in my my opinion. Brilliant. And, and you're absolutely right. I mean, let's, let's, let's just bring up some questions because I know that the questions are flying in. Yeah. So oh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's J, JBS. Yeah. Let, 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 let me, let me just come back to this one. So Simon, a question for you. Oh. Yeah. And this one for you, Simon. Yeah. Will the traditional recruitment agency model change for the future? Good question. Um, yeah. It's a great question. And, and thank you, John. I mean, my, my, my view is it's already started to change. Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, gone are the days where it, it's just throw as much at the wall and, and hope it sticks. And, and I think you're seeing a, a huge transition from the big, big agencies to smaller niche bespoke agencies like ourselves. So um, where it is all about the relationship, where it is all about immersing yourself, you know, into to the client, becoming an extension of their recruitment team, if you like, and adding real value. You know, we see a, a, a real... Um, the whole piece of that long-term uh, working relationship is really, really important to us. You know, we want to find the best talent in the market, but but we want to find it based on what our clients are ideally looking for, not what we think they're looking for. So I do think um, traditional big agencies are probably going to not not they'll never fade away the Michael Pages because the majority of people like myself that run their own recruitment businesses have come from Michael Page and use a lot of the skills that they, they were taught. But I think yeah. we understand that recruitment needs to change. And the pandemic has proven that, you know, those that have been out there supporting and, and doing right by people and remembering that today's sort of candidate is tomorrow's client. And that's a key point for me it is, 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 is hopefully going to, you know, add real benefit to the smaller businesses moving forward. So I think it will change. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I, I, I think just on there, JBS, it's basically changing for the job seeker as well, isn't it? The, the, the time's been basically, you know, I, 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 I've been two sides of the fence, as it were. The days we just sent Simon Parsons, Nigel Man sends him his CV and saying, there you go, Simon, give me a call when you've got a job on, um, you know, and, and, and happy days, I'll, 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 I'll wait to hear from you. And you don't, and you don't hear back from them. Those days are gone, haven't they? It's about building relationships, isn't it? It's about sort of getting to know your recruiter, getting to know your sort of, you know, your agency and working with them. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I know there's, I'm sure the com uh, question is going to come up about ghosting because we've talked. About <laughs> <several> <laughs> times. No, you know, yeah, yeah. I think, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not here to slag other agencies off or other recruiters off. You know, I'm the I'm I'm the 
the, the sector's worst critic, you know, in terms of the bad practices that happen, the challenge, you know, we talk about it, I talk about it with candidates every day and it frustrates me every day and I've posted about it. And, you know, the post that I posted about changing the way we recruit, changing how we interview, changing, you know, being doing right by, by the human person and giving feedback after they've put the effort into a, either apply to a job or um, go through a process, you know, I've, I've written about that. And, and you know, these, these posts have got 20, 30, 40, 50,000 views. Yeah. You know, generally, um, and I hate to say this, but the only critics really have come uh, have come from recruiters. Yeah. You know, other people are going, wow, this is quite refreshing. Well, it's not really, is it? It's just yeah. the right thing to do. If You know, for me, you, you know, if I've got a relationship, if I haven't got a relationship with somebody, but I'm, they're going to go through a process with me, my job is to help them and support them to get them through that process. Yeah. Yes, my, I'm paid by the client because, yeah. you know, and ultimately I, I find what the client wants. So I can't always, I might yeah. think that somebody's a better candidate, but it's down to the client ultimately. Yeah. But, but my job is to be support both parties, support my client and advise my client why I think that person's right for the job. Yeah. And for the candidate is to support them through that process and really work with them. And if they don't get the job, it doesn't it doesn't just end there because actually everybody's got a skill. So yeah. everybody, someone's you're always going to get a job. You know, yeah. my job is to help you. If you're not, if you didn't get it the first time, where did we fall down? What didn't we do so well? How did yeah. we prepare? What could we have done better? How yeah. do we move forward? Yeah, see, I, 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 I guess I'll always say that from a from a job seeker as well. He's basically, guys, but first bit of gold for you: do not flood the market with loads and loads of recruitment agencies. Yeah, you know those those days are gone where you push out to every single man and his dog. Yeah, and I've known it from a from a from a hiring manager that quite clearly, you know, I see Simon Parsons' CV from from three different things, you know, and quite clearly, guys. Only use one or two people you know really, really well. Get to know them. Get behind them. You know, ring them basically once, you know, every fortnight, whatever. Yeah, get to know them on a personal basis. So de-risk yourself from the business, you know. De-risk yourself. Take yourself away from the recruitment agency, but basically put your content out there and God knows what. So, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm, I've just seen you all. I've just basically run through because loads of questions coming in. Gosh, full of questions oh. today. Um, Malcolm, basically, I'll get back to you. Uh, I accept your connection yet. Thank you, Malcolm. Malcolm's got this one. Gosh, we'll have to see over the top of this one. Simon, yeah. A question for Simon. I've seen some awful CVs, <laughs> and we all, Malcolm, yeah. You know, uh, so far nine pages full of waffle, helping to rewrite twenty-two, seven recruiting in jobs. What's your spin on ensuring a CV is looking correct in the eyes of the recruiter? Good question. I mean, I guess Mal we'll get what Malcolm's asking there is, Simon, when, when you get loads of CVs in, your inbox must be, gosh, chocker by now. What do you look for? Basically, how do you, how do you pick those out? Yeah, what stops you hitting that delete button? It. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, as a, as a recruiter, you know, obviously you're day in, day out looking at CVs and, and you know, again, I've gone on record saying, um, honestly, most recruiters don't read the full CV, not until they think, yes, that's of interest, and then they go into detail. I think we, 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 we scan through it and we pick out relevant information very, very quickly. Um, I would suggest, and, and, you know, for me, a good, a well-written CV gives me a, a, an indication of who the person is, a bit of a profile of who they are, what they're about. Um, and then, you know, it's pretty detailed in terms of their career history. Um, and I would say uh, always a little bit about the company because, you know, we don't know every company, you know, yeah. you get to know a lot of companies. And obviously, if you've been in hospitality recruitment, as long as I have, you know most of the businesses. But a little brief, so I'd say company name, maybe a line about the company and then, you, you know, your, your key areas of, of responsibility, four or five bullet points, your key areas of um, what you've achieved, numbers, that type of thing. That's really important yeah. because then that shows that you have an understanding about the value that you've added to the business, your commercial, that type of stuff. That will then prompt a conversation. So yeah. no more than sort of two. It's very difficult. The more senior you get, I know it's very difficult to come press something onto uh, two sheets of A4. So if you have to go to three, don't worry about it. Don't take out really important information to keep it to two pages. But, you know, try to keep it as, as condensed yeah. and as compact and succinct as possible. Brilliant. Okay. So, Simon, uh, the only thing I'd say about CVs, guys, is um, a couple of things there, really. 
is your CV does one job, yeah? It's the golden key to get you the interview. It doesn't get you the job. You get the bloody job, yeah? Okay, your CV only gets you to the interview stage, yeah? So take out all the lines, take out all the big pictures, take out all the lines, you know, because of ATS, yeah? Automated trick and systems, which is the bane of all banes. You'll never get through. Um, take out your fancy CV, put it into Word text and send it off, basically, two to three pages. Uh, make sure you've got three things in there, basically. One is revenue. One is cost and basically mitigating the risk. Those are the three things that you're responsible for. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. But uh, the rest of it is just waffle, basically. Um, I don't really care what you've done in the past. I don't really care, basically, you know, what, what you've done. I'll have a look at it. But are you a right fit for my business? And what problem do you solve? I is, think is, it's is nice there. Yeah. Like you said, Nigel, it's a door opener, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a, a door opener to a conversation. You know, I, yeah. I won't... You know, and, and I don't think many people that I respect in the industry won't just base it solely on a CV. Yes, if it's not right, and it's not right based on what the client's looking for, and that's what we base our decision on, by the way. we don't. It's not me saying, oh, I don't like the look of that CV, so I'm not going to send it through. It's the client's given us a strict criteria. We take a, we take a lot of time to find out exactly what the client wants, both yeah. culturally and yeah. technically, um, you know, if it's not right, you're going to get a, from us, you would get a response saying, oh, look, unfortunately, you're not right for this role, but yeah. we'll keep you in mind for any other roles and please give us a call if you want to talk that through. Um, but it's the door, you know, and once the door is opened and that conversation starts, that's where it starts. It's not, it's not yeah. the only a route to goal either. No, I think, I think you're quite right. It's the golden keys. You just want to lock the lock. Um, Paul Rowe. Gosh. Uh, good morning, Nigel. Yeah. Happy New Year to you, Mr. Rowe. How the devil are you? Question for you both. How long... Oh, here we go. How long do you think it will take for the catering hospitality industry to recover from the damage of last year? I can pick this one, Paul. Yeah. No problem at all. Um, how long is a piece of string? Yeah. You know. <laughs> gosh. If I, if I had the answer to that, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be talking to Simon Parsons today. I'd be in the Santa Pay on my yacht. Yeah. Drinking a uh, nice boiling jet. And a, and a bottle of Cristal. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, it, the, the gut feel is talking to, you know, the industry people and, and talking to the industry gurus and all the sort of, you know, Kate Nichols, Andy Street and all those sort of guys is... The vaccine's going to be rolled out, you know. I mean, 1.3 million people have been vaccinated already. Um, you know, we're going to get those top four groups in. Um, hospitality, if, if I'm truthfully honest with you, I probably mentioned this on the show before with JBS and stuff like that, is Easter is really the start point. Yeah, you know, let's face it. And I think we've, uh, Paul, we've, we've basically got six months worth of, you know, people hate me saying this, but I think for the first three months, nothing's going to happen. And if you do get a job, you're very, very lucky. Um, but certainly the first six months is going to be very, very ropey. Um, I think basically coming to summer, we might have some traction. And certainly coming into Christmas is where we're going to get any sort of normality if we're lucky. Yep. So I hate to be the doom and gloom, but you know me, I'll tell you what it is. And quite clearly, you know, Paul, if you've got any, um, if, if, if you want different on that, please come back to me. Simon, your views, any, any yeah, different on that? I think um, I'm, I'm a lot more upbeat and optimistic um, than I have been, and, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, going into sort of the Christmas period, um, the conversations that uh, we were certainly having with the, the senior leadership teams across the clients that we've worked with, um, they're upbeat, they are positive. Yes, there's frustration and, and the lockdown hasn't helped and all of that, but they can see a light at the end of the tunnel and they're preparing for that. Um, I think you only have to go spend a bit of time on LinkedIn and you are seeing people picking up new roles and and, and, and that shows that there is a, a recovery starting to happen. Yeah. I think, obviously, the vaccine, we know that, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, with our sentinel offline, you know, we were expecting January, February, March to be really challenging and I still think they are. However, you know, we have picked up roles and they are the first roles we've picked up in, in a few months. So, yeah. you know, yeah. the clients I think are looking at it as Q1 is still survival. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, given the furlough scheme, there are yeah. still going to be more redundancies. Unfortunately, given the nature of, of, of support that's, that's out there and where businesses are, there are going to be some more businesses that will go under. And, and that's just the, the reality of it, unfortunately. I think Q2 for most businesses is planning. And what's what they you know getting their aces in places if they haven't started recruiting now and and i mean now as in two last two or three months um the, you know the talent is starting to move um so you know if they are not planning they need to get planning asap i think q3 will be the implementation of that plan 
And then Q4 is all about Christmas and trade. And, and hopefully we're not back to where we are with with a, another spike or anything. And they can really sort of, I guess, yeah. go full steam into 20. It sounds frightening, doesn't it? Get ready for 2022. Um, yeah. But I think that's where most people's heads are at. But there is confidence, certainly within the sector yeah. at senior leadership level, that yeah. you know we've 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 weathered the the really bad storm. Um, we're still in choppy waters, but but there's a, we've got a navigation tool to get us out of it. Yeah, ask plenty. Uh, we will be back stronger. I keep I keep beating on about this on LinkedIn. Those people that follow me on LinkedIn, uh, ask plenty. We're bouncing back. We're going to be stronger. You know, it's going to come back. Uh, when that is, Paul Rowe, I don't know, but you know, we will be stronger. And quite clearly, start your strategy now. If you hadn't started it two months ago, start recruiting your people. Get those best people off the market. Yeah, because they won't be around for long. Uh, Mark Hind, uh, let me just say hello. Oh, morning, Nigel. Yeah, morning. M- morning, Mark. I read your book, mate. Yeah, you know, 50, 50, uh, 50 days of lockdown. Yeah, just, just I'll, I'll, I'll give Mark a book. It's quite a good book, actually. You, you get it on Amazon. So basically, you, you know, he's, Mark, Mark's a GM who basically wrote a book over lockdown. It's, it's quite interesting, actually. If you, I read that over Christmas. So thanks, Mark. Thanks for that. Jason Cluckliffe says, uh, we've recruited well. Yeah, in this sort of pre-season, ready for the new season to start. Yeah, others lost our gain. Yeah, so th- there's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, you know. Well, just, yeah, I think that's that. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that there've been those who've been at quick off the mark have picked up some really, really good candidates. You know, yeah. and I think there's two. There's two. T- t- you know, I think the people I've talked to across the board. There are those that have been displaced that are really great candidates that, unfortunately, you know, for whatever reason, have found themselves out of work. People like Jason, was it Jason? Um, Jason, you know, yeah, Jason. He's been out there looking at, for talent and, and bringing that on board. But then, yeah. you know, big thumbs up to him because that's a clever, clever yeah. recruitment strategy. Um, and, in, and and then you've got a, two pools. You've got those that are in a business that are sticking tight because they're in a job, you know, and, and now's not a great time to be looking, um, yeah. but haven't particularly felt that their company has looked after themselves. So they are going to start looking um, yeah. when they feel it's safer to do so. Uh, and you've got those that have been really looked after their company that are going to be yeah. better by the company that are going to be very difficult to take out of the companies, if you like. So, it's you know, it's, it's from a recruiter's perspective, it, it's it's an exciting time given that, you know, you've got to have a network to, to get to these people to be able to talk to them because, you know, and, and the companies have got to have a great sort of, um, brand uh, proposition, if you like, to entice great people to come and work for them now. You know, gone. The, I think yeah. this pandemic has shown us that there's more to life than just work. So, yeah. yes, I'm great at what I do, but why should I come and work for you, Mr. Client? What What is it that you're going to give me above yeah. and beyond a job and a salary? Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just bring a few more people. Morning, Mr. Etteridge. Uh, yeah, Paul used to work with us as well. In, in, in Rico. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, morning, Paul. Morning, morning, Nigel. Morning, Simon. Yeah, morning, Paul. Uh, Jason McEwen says, an amazing example of diversity, Simon. Identify the new wins. What are the learns and changing? Changing. God, can I can read that. Changing, yeah. Win, learn, change. Yeah, so there's Jace. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's quite right, isn't he? You know, he's, he's, he's identifying those new wins. It's about change. It's about basically doing something different. You know, going back to JBS, if you do the same things, the same things, you're going to get exactly the same results. But, you know, those, those winners that are basically going to win in the, certainly in the hospitality industry, those can be the ones that are going to change. Yeah. You know, he's, he's looking for those wins, isn't it? He's looking for those great wins and make, making the most of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember watching a, one of your podcasts with JBS and then, and I think I commented on, on something that you said. It's, it's absolutely right. You, you do the things that you've always done, you'll get the same results. You know, we've been, because we're small, because we're agile, because we are passionate about delivering. So because I was a chef and then I was a, a, a current service director at BA, my, my whole ethos is around service, you know, quality, value and service. And and and, and almost to a detriment, I'm, I'm probably too service focused but you know you've got to give whether you're a restaurant whether you're a recruiter whether you're whoever you are the customer is king right so so give the customer what they want and be you need to be able to evolve and 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 whether you know we we do a lot of collaborative working with people you know who um believe in the same values set that we believe in and therefore you know we share best best practice we share information we we, we just try and become the best 
self, if you like, that we can. And I think that's yeah. absolutely right. The, 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 you can't just stand still. The world's moving too fast and you've got to grow, go with it. I mean, and you're a prime example of that, Nigel, without sounding sycophantic, you know, yeah. what you've done and, and how you've evolved and created this online profile and these podcasts and stuff like that, you know, yeah. it, it's just been a, a, a real sort of inspiration to someone like myself that's quite nervous of being on a camera and um, hates the sound of his voice and anyway. You know me, I couldn't give a toss, basically. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love me or hate me, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, that, that's the way it is, you know what I mean? It's, if you don't want to listen, you know what the delete button is, but if you want to listen, happy days, welcome, how are you? Um, Andrew Beckett says, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shut up, Nigel. Andrew Beckett says, um, how does Simon, yeah, here's, here's one for you, basically talks about ageism. So, yeah, how does Simon overcome the unconscious bias that is ageism? People looking to transfer their skills to a different industry sector. Yeah, so, interesting one. Good question. I think um, unconscious bias is a real hot topic at the moment. It's very difficult um, because, you know, being a human, we all have bias, whether we, we're, we're conscious of it or not. I think honesty and, and transparency in everything that you do is the only way that we can do it. You know, we've got AI now that, that doesn't see the bias, but ultimately... You know, you can't take the human out of recruitment, in my opinion. AI is brilliant for sifting and, and, and filtering and all of that type of stuff. But ultimately, you still need that one-to-one -one contact, that, in, you know, interview, that, that conversation um, with, a, with a person, whether it's a recruiter that's been briefed by a client or whether it's an internal recruiter for, for the business. Um, you know, it's about being sticking to what you, you've been asked to look for. You know, it's, it's very, it's a really difficult topic. It's something that, you know, we could talk for hours and hours about. Um, but it's, uh, it's probably not the best podcast, but yeah. we try our best. We, we don't, uh, you know, hands up, we probably don't always get it right. But you always try to be very honest and open and say, like, this is what the criteria is. This is why I, I can't move you forward. And, and, and give, give people an understanding rather than just saying delete no. Yeah, so I think that's so important. I think, you know, just just going back to the ageism bit as well, I think, Andrew, there's a lot of um, call at the moment for people with the, the, the grey air brigade, yeah, you know, that basically the experienced guys that quite clearly people are calling on at the moment, you know. Um, you know, and certainly when we come out of the lockdown, there'll be a lot of consultants, recruitment, and that people want that sort of font of knowledge. I know, Andrew, you've got great font of knowledge in the, in the tyre industry, and there's great videos. That is going to be called upon as soon as we come out of lockdown, you know. So that ageism bit, yes, you're quite right, you know, and, and everybody feels it, you know. I think if you're over 50, you know, it's quite clearly, God, where's my next job going to come from? But uh, rest assured that quite clearly that will come back. I love Jason's, and we were talking about this basically, um, Simon, before we come on, yeah. Today's candidate is tomorrow's client, and you're absolutely right, Jason. You know, we, myself and Simon were talking about this, you know, that the way people are treating each other now is basically those are going to be the next CEOs, those are going to be the M MDs in the future, you know. Those, those young, that young generation, especially that sort of 18 to 24 year old, is going to be your next MD, is going to be your next CEO when we're pushing shopping trolleys around, when Rachel's or Tesco's, whatever it is. So, yeah, absolutely right there, Jason. Um, I agree. Just, just moving on to Trevor. Just moving on to Trevor. Um, gosh, we have to go to the top of this one. So it's a bit. It's a bit. Yeah. First of all, morning, Trevor. Morning to you. Oh yes, agreed. LinkedIn has been a great help for me. It was not for my LinkedIn. I would not work today. Also, agency I had to do more reply back when I had all the BBC over for me. And great, every agent worked for me now. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about LinkedIn side because that, that basically, I mean, you know, LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been a, a, a massive sort of conduit, hasn't it? It's sort of, yeah, you know. It, it, how do you use it yeah. better? Do, do, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess for me, you know, we when I first came into recruitment, it was a fairly new tool, new tool, um, which says how long it's been going, really. And um, I remember thinking at the time, well, why, why are we getting? You know, basically, we're, we're we're opening up the door, our little black book to the world, um, and, and so therefore recruiters won't be needed because they can just go on LinkedIn and find their, their ideal people, and that had proven. But then, you know, like myself that not everybody is comfortable on, on social media it is a massively important tool and and through lockdown you know for me i've built an online community through my posts which i you know never thought would grow as, as large as it has and get the volume of 
re yeah. response that it has. Yeah. Um, but it's also allowed me to meet people like Nigel, like Matt Angleton, like, you know, lots of lots of Monica Collins, people like that, that I would never speak to. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't spoken to in, in 13, 14 years. Um, yeah. And through social media, I've got to know them and they've got to know me and that relationship is being built. I think, you know, without doubt, we talked about PPs earlier. Social media is absolutely a big part of you, whether you're a, a job searcher, you know, you're looking for your next role, um, or you want to be known as a as, a, as somebody that's, that's hot on the topics of your sector, you know, an influencer in the sector. So, you know, yes, I have a great CV. Yes, that's the door opener. Equally, uh, you know, as important, if not more important for me now, is 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 be on a social media platform. LinkedIn is a professional one, so obviously that's an obvious one. But that doesn't really matter when you're on. But you know, it's a great engagement tool. It's a great way to to build relationships with recruiters, with potential employers, um, and it's a great way to get your knowledge and 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 who you are out there. I think the yeah. biggest challenge for people and and, and again, that, you know, over the, 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 the lockdown, I've been supporting clients uh, and then continuing to do helping their their um, employees with their LinkedIn profile that need to go out and find people. Yeah. You know, it's really important that you get it right, but you get it, you, you, you come across as authentic. That's the, the key word for me. You know, if you're posting content, if you're coming online like Nigel does, that's brilliant, but you just yeah. got to be you. And, and, and I know Nigel's helped a lot of people um, go and do their first videos, haven't you, Nigel? And, and it, it's scary. It, it, it is scary, but you know, it's, it's a great way of, of, of getting yourself out there and, and letting people understand what skills you can bring to them, how you yeah. can help. I, th I, th I think you're, right, you're quite right, though, Sal. I mean, basically, you know, it's it's especially with the videos. I mean, video content is, is actually good. I mean, who who just thought that we'd be in a live podcast? I never thought I'd be doing that. Jesus, you know, it's just if if you just said that back in back in my corporate days, you know, back in the boardroom, I'd said well, no chance. That's that's for the current in department, isn't it? The marketing department, you know, go go, go and talk to those guys. They they do all that sort of stuff, you know. So, but for me, I mean, video. Um, you know, we've got a lot got lots to go with videos, and quite clearly, you know, it's a case of just doing it. I mean, your worst critic is you. Yeah, you know, the way you sound is is my shirt all right? Is my hair okay? You know, did I say the right things? And I think my first video, I think we got some, I don't know, sort of ten thousand views. And I, I, I guess the first thing is just basically get your content right, you know, and hit that send button and just send it. Yeah, you know, go and take the dog for a walk, go and walk around the park, come back, and then see if you've got basically how many views and how many are, are coming coming onto it. Yeah, you know, but the best thing to do is just do it. Just get out your comfort zone. I know, Sam, when you first come on today, you were like, oh, my God, what do I say? What do, what do I do? Um, you know, but, you know, it, 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 it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. Next question. Next, Sorry, next question. Sorry. I'm just going to add to that. I think, you, you know, I guess for me coming on here, yes, I'm nervous because I'm not great on, I like being on screen, but, but also I'm a recruiter and we talked about this, you know, We've got a bad rap, and rightly so, I think. Um, but uh, I, I just quickly on that LinkedIn piece, I'd say, you know, create a strong LinkedIn profile, you know, complete your experiences, um, don't leave gaps on that, make sure that wherever possible you quantify your results, that type of thing. I think engage is a big word, you know, yeah. put content out there that is authentic, that is informative, that is helpful, um, and, and comment and, 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 you know, share other people's content as well, because that's how, you know, if I look at what I did over the lockdown, you know, we went from, I was probably getting a thousand views on a post, maybe. Yeah. I've had up to a hundred thousand views on a post, purely because I turn up every day. I believe in what I say. I don't necessarily think that everybody's going to agree with it, but you know, that's not, not what I'm here for. I'm here to sort of offer support and, and trust and build build relationships with people that want to build a relationship with me. Yeah, so, and I, I think you're quite right. I think we linked in. Don't don't be afraid to post. Yeah, okay. You, that first post is bloody scary. Let's face it. You know that first video is bloody scary because you you'll criticise yourself. God knows what. Don't worry if you just get two likes. Don't worry about it. Yeah, go and comment on people's posts. Go and build your network. You know, go to the top. Type in hospitality. Type in recruiter. Go and connect with those people that basically are interested in you. Yeah. Don't go to Bitcoin and all those sort of guys, you know, because if it's not interesting in you, all you're doing is just building your network and quite clearly send out to the masses. 
it doesn't work. Yeah, you know, you, you've got to have people that basically are connected to you and like your content. But Simon says, keep your content going, you know, keep it fresh, keep it, you know, keep keep, keep, keep doing a podcast, keep doing basically all the stuff you're doing. So cool. Somebody asked basically here, and this is an interesting question. Why, I think it means how can people get hired for what they can do, not just on their CV. So interesting comment that I didn't mean, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, obviously, Ryan, yeah, Van der Wisterhoen, yeah. Um, and apologies if basically I've, I've, I've pronounced your name different there. But I guess what he's asking there is basically um, something that I bang on that side. It's basically, you know, that your CV is, as I said before, it's just your, it's just a golden key, isn't it? Yeah, it gets you the interview, yeah. yeah. Okay. What people have got to try and do is try and de-risk themselves in the market. So with your content, yeah, and what you do and what you say, you know, and go out and do a post, tell the world what you're doing. Tell the problem what, 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 what value are and what you're actually solving in the world. Yeah, you know, why do you, as a hiring manager, all I want to know is why the bloody hell am I hiring you, yeah, over somebody else? What problem do you take away from me, yeah? Yeah, you know, I've got anxiety, I've got fear, I'm going to lose my business, yeah? If you're going to come in and basically take all that away from me and help me in the business, that's what you need to sell through revenue, through cost, through uh, risk and mitigation, all that sort of stuff. So I guess yeah. that's the answer to that one. Yeah, yeah, it is. I think you're, you're right. The social media piece, and and um, again through lockdown, I did a marketing, um, I guess, course. Really, it was a sixteen week course with a, a company called Hotso Media and Sean Anderson, who was absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, and and that's how I got into posting, and and, and the content that I put out was was yeah. through learning. And then he yeah. talks very passionately about understanding who your audience is. That's really important. Yeah. Once you know who your target audience is, i.e. who do you want to talk to, who do you want to engage with, who do you want to engage with you, yeah. and then you start talking to them with the relevant content. And if you don't know where to start with the content, just go and have a look at what they're putting out because okay. these people that are in the target audience who want to be associated with will yeah. be commenting about stuff. They will be talking about stuff. And even if you're just this initially leaving comments, you'll start to have an opinion on something and then you go, hang on, I, you might not agree with it. You might say, well, actually, I want to post something that I agree with around this subject. And that's how it will build. Cool. Yeah. And, and, and be consistent, I guess, is, is, is yeah. the word there. And yeah. as you say, I guess the key thing that I've just picked up there, Simon, is, is know your audience. Yeah. Know who you're yeah. talking to and know you basically you've got. Yeah. So I'm looking at the time. It's 42 minutes. Yeah. You okay doing another 10 minutes or so? Yeah. 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 You know, time flies with these things. Um, Paul Rowe basically is saying, can you let me have Simon's email address, please? Yeah. I'll I'll give you that at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all the way across Simon Parsons at uh, Connect, God knows what. Um, LinkedIn user, LinkedIn user, you need to get to the top, by the way and click the button yeah i don't know who it is um so I, I, I don't know your name sorry but have the days of applying are for published job opportunities gone is the future of proactive searching marketing the individual to fill create positions via agencies social media linkedin and facebook so i guess he's basically saying you know it's those jo those job boards yeah you know in those jobs that basically repeat all the way through and ghosting and all that yeah you know we see lots of those don't we you know you see lots of those repeat ones is the days of basically just searching the old old school, isn't it? That sort of, you know, looking at job boards and hoping and praying somebody comes along. Are those days yeah, gone or is there another approach? I don't think they've gone. Um, there's a place for them. There absolutely is a place for them. Um, but the, the way that they are used is, is we're far less reliant on them. Now we have other social media tools and, and all the other different tools that we have. So they are a part of what we do not the whole of what we do. So I'd say absolutely, if you see a job on one of the job boards, you know, the, the jobs that we picked up yesterday, two of them have gone on a job board. That's not the only search I'm going to do. Yes, it, I'll, I'm hopeful that somebody, the ideal candidate is looking for that, that particular role and will apply, but that will be in conjunction with me doing a search online using, um, you know, uh, LinkedIn Navigator and LinkedIn Premium, it'll, it'll yeah. go in line with me asking for referrals in my network, it'll go in line with me yeah. um, posting the job on LinkedIn, potentially, um, yeah. you know, all those types, all those things will, will yeah. happen, um, yeah. not just, I won't just post a, you know, if you are a recruiter, by the way, that is just posting the job on the job board and going, then you're not a very good recruiter in my opinion. So, no. yes, no. they'll still be used for the foreseeable, um, yeah. but yes, the other bits that you talked about, social media, um, utilising your, your network. You know, great um, point that we talked about in the Coffee Club recently was actually 
you know, go and find out. You can now look at companies and find out who the hiring managers are. Now, that's not me saying go and badger the hiring manager, but find out who they're connected to. Because if you, you chances are you'll be have a, a, if not first, certainly a second degree connection. Somebody that you've worked for might work at that company. You can then talk to that person, ask them what it's like to work at the company. They might tell you it's an absolute nightmare, and therefore you don't want to be applying for the job anyway. They might tell you it's fantastic, and actually they know. Nigel Mann, who's the hiring manager, really well, and they'll yeah. drop your name in conversation. It's a great way to, to, yeah. to, to support your application. It's not the only way. Yeah. And, and I think going back to my, I, I, I use the word relationships, yeah, you know, your relationship with your, you know, your, your recruitment agency, your recruiter in that sort of kind of sense is absolute paramount. You know, getting to know them, getting to know each other inside out quite clearly. What, what are you looking for? What's your salary expectations? You know, what's your location? What's your sort of parameters in your, in your job search? You know, and as soon as that job comes up, it's about sort of talking to each other and agreeing what, what, what are the parameters, you know, if, if, if you're looking for a 20 K salary, that's fine. But some people say, no, my salary starts at X, you know, don't contact them if you've got a 20 grand salary, you know, just, just the way it is. So you know, you, you've got to be quite honest and upfront with your, with your recruiter and set your stall out very, very quickly about what you actually want and have some understanding of relationship between you and your recruiter. Yeah. That's so yeah. really good point. The, the one about honesty and transparency that is the, the make and break, you know, yeah. like candidates want that from the, from the recruiter, recruiters need that from you. So, yeah. so, you know, yeah. if you're saying to me and we have it all the time, I'm not moving for less than 60 K yeah. and I, and yet every, every other box is ticked. It'd yeah. be remiss of me not to talk to you about the role. And if you turn around and say, I've told you not to talk to me about jobs less than 60 K then fine, yeah. but I'm only doing my job as to, You've asked me for all of these. We're trying to tick every box, right? Yeah. And it's like that for the, you know, we can help influence clients. You know, we have our, our relationships aren't just built over one or, or, or two years. These are 15, 16, you know, odd year relationships yeah. where, you know, you might not tick all the criteria that the clients ask for. Yeah. But I've been able to say to the client, I know this person. You've got yeah. to trust me. You want, you need to see this person. They are slightly left field, but I tell you what, it's going to make me think if, what you've asked me for is it actually what you're looking for and yeah. that's the beauty of a building a longer term relationship with someone like myself or other recruiters is that you know we are able to influence Okay, Jay, 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 we might have to look over the top of this one. Typical Jason, yeah, he's, he's come up with a with a book here, Jason. Yeah, you know, <laughs> oh my God, look at that, it's covered our faces. Yeah, um, Mother's Day appears to be the next big day for planning ahead. However, we've tons of amazing, massive sports events to clear to help. Clear blue waters ahead from March. I feel as though roughly getting through to Easter and beyond. Agreed, many will fall along with retail. Therefore, many more candidates going for the same jobs. Being different is so important. FTC rules basically will help, and I'll feel probably from February. Any thoughts? I'll take that down. Actually, yeah, you're absolutely right there, Jace. I mean, basically, you've 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 got to be different. Yeah, what what makes you stand out from the crowd? You know, whether you be doing a podcast, whether you be doing a uh, Tony Rose basically does basically YouTube uh, videos. Yeah, and he sends them as is as his covering letter, you know, it's about being different. It's a, you know, I hate covering letters. I hate doing them. I hate basically, they're so boring, aren't they? Yeah. And it's about being, it's about how do you stand different? I mean, one of the guys basically spoke to me the other day and he sent something through the post. Yeah. <laughs> you know, an actual letter, you know? So, you know, when it arrived on that person's deck, they actually opened some posts, you know, how, 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 how unusual is that these days, you know? And it's, it's just different, isn't it? You know, it's just, it's, but hey, Simon, how, how, how do you differentiate yourself? How do you, how, how do you make yourself different? How do you, you know, sort of, is, 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 is there any tips? Is there any sort of, you know, is, is there anything people can do or? Oh, is... um, I, I think that, you know, the, the problem is there's, as we've talked about this on occasion, there's lots and lots of noise out there, isn't there? And, and you know, video was the new thing. It's now not the new thing and everybody's doing it. And so it's, it's about being, I guess, being you, being yeah. very authentic, being honest, being truthful, you know, yeah. looking at the job and, and being honest with yourself and saying, yeah. is this really... Am I really right for this job? Because I'll give you an example, um, the, and my inbox has been absolutely battered overnight, but um, yeah. the last job before this that I posted uh, on the job board, we got yeah. 637 applications for one role. Wow. Now, best will in the world, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but two-thirds of them were not right. They, they either hadn't yeah. read the, the, <laughs> the, the text that we put on about what we were looking for or they were just, you know, and I get why, 
But the reality is, unfortunately, you know, there are only so many people that are right for that role. Um, And it does come down to simple things like location or, you know, certainly in this market, clients are so specific because they can, they're they're allowed to be because there are those people available on the market. Um, Standing out from a crowd, do do what we've talked about. Get yourself out there, put yourself out of your comfort zone. Just just embrace doing something different, be authentic. Talk yeah. to people because people will talk and, and you'll get your name now. And, and you know, as I say, I, for me, it's, as, as a recruiter, I've always not wanted to be known as a recruiter. I've wanted to be known as Simon Parsons, who's a good yeah. guy who wants to do things the right way. And, and the only way I can get people to trust me and believe me is if they, they talk to me and get to know me over years. And, you know, Jason, hopefully, he's known me for, for God knows how many years, 12, probably nearly all the time I've been in recruitment. Um, you know, I've never placed him, but I've supported him through um, processes and stuff like that. And that giving back is really important. Yeah, and I, and I know basically some, um, most people won't know this, but we, we you mentioned earlier, we do, we, do, we do a coffee club, yeah, which I started and over to you, Simon. Um, every Monday at nine o'clock, yeah, we get the guys together on the same boat. Um, some good stuff has come out of that and it's, it's a really supportive network where if you are a job seeker you are a suffering um come and join us on a monday there's you know it's nothing you know there's, it's not a selling tool it's not a webinar it's not it's not 90 percent with webinar and then 10 percent you know worth of content yeah 90 percent worth of selling stuff and 10 percent worth of content it's purely guys are in the same boat yeah you know um nobody's gonna come and say your cvs and bitcoin and all that sort of stuff it's just genuine guys guys and girls basically getting together and talking about their job search. It's a support network. So if you want to join that, um, please do come and join Simon. I know you run that, and obviously the best person to contact is probably yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a Zoom call, so quite clearly. But it, it, it gets you up on Monday morning, 9 o'clock, gets you out, showered, and on that call, please do. Simon, you know, do you want to... Yeah, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it, really? It's a, it's a, it's a light-hearted bit of a boost to your, your week um yeah. you know if you're feeling yeah. a bit down or, or you know a bit bruised and battered from not getting the job that you thought you were going to get or getting ghosted or all the things that happen and have been happening you know it's a it's a it's a, a, a safe place where you can be very honest but be emotional we're, we're all in the same boat but, but you know talk and and talk freely and 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 we try and support whether that's Bringing on, bringing people, um, you know, guest speakers, which we've had that have been really helpful, or just talk within ourselves about our experiences that we're finding, how we're feeling, and, and how we're overcoming them. And you know, it's I'd absolutely encourage if it's not for you, but you know somebody that's struggling and out of work, or yeah. you know, just come and join us because it's it's a really good yeah. fun. Yeah, the good, the good point in that is basically the numbers are dwindling, which is great because they've all gone off and got jobs, yeah, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 which is which is fantastic and it works. So you know, it's just yeah, <laughs> what a nice point to have. Yeah, I've got crap numbers. Please come and join us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's it's a it's a real good reason. And some that I mean, all credit to you on that one because quite clearly, you know, it's something you do outside of your recruitment network. It's free. Yeah, you exactly. give it your free time. You know, yeah. yeah. It's nothing to do with uh, SP Connect. You know, other than that, yeah. that's my com- the company. But yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's it's just about giving something back and helping people. And yeah. and you know what I found through the whole of this piece is that uh, you know people talk about that your purpose, and and I guess I found that I don't I never really understood why I was in recruitment, um, and I found why I'm in recruitment because I genuinely love helping people, and and the coffee club is an extension of that. I I, I, I absolutely love yeah. it. I love the people that I've met through it. Um, yeah. And and hopefully, like like I just said, but you know, quite a few people have left us now because they've got jobs. And while we, I would never say it's because of the coffee club, I think a lot of people would say it helped them through their, their, their yeah. the times when they were looking. Yeah, so, so time's moving on, so I'm going to quickly whiz through these. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mike Gardner, Mike, good morning to you. Uh, is the future of management exec employment more likely to be on a contracted, self-employed basis rather than an employee, especially for the older candidates? Yeah, good, good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say that interim work yeah. is certainly yeah. something high on the agenda. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning of the program, uh, we set up an, an interim business right at the beginning because our clients were saying, "Look, we're going to need people, maybe for three to six months, you know." But we, we don't, we can't, we don't want to bring them on permanently. But then that might change into a permanent role. Um, but I, 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 I'd be lying if I said I know the, the actual answer to that. But I think that you know, from a candidate per, 
perspective do they want to try before they buy i uh, yeah. you know it's a good idea that they come in and work for six months and get to yeah. see the real you know yeah. culture of a business before they commit yeah. to three to five years well, I'm going to say there, Mike, he's basically, I'm going to be con- very controversial here. There is lots of people who know what they're talking about. And there's lots of briefcases with slicked air and God knows what, the copy and paste. So, yeah, take care of that, what you want, Mike. But, uh, yeah, that's me being controversial. But there you go. That's just me being honest. Yeah. Some people set their own consultancies. And, yeah, OK, let's see how that one goes. Uh, Jason, in our new world, thoughts on best time to post on LinkedIn for the best impact? Um, yeah, you're, you're up against basically, Jason, you're up against the algorithm, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, it's just, um, I, I always post the same time, I always post in the morning, um, you know, and, and, and get thousands of, of views on it. Yeah, you know, not that makes any difference, but, you know, um, I've also posted on a Saturday afternoon and got the same result, but, you know, and then I've posted on a Monday at nine o'clock and for some unknown reason, it's just gone straight, you, there's, there's no rhyme reason for it. What I would say is post exactly the same time. Um, and basically make sure you turn up basically almost two, three times a week. I, I, I must post every day, but, you know, that's to keep my network and keep my content fresh, to be honest. Simon, any views on that? Yeah, I think rule of thumb, as the experts will tell you, um, is either first thing in the morning, so as people are commuting into work or, or are sat at their desk before they start work, um, lunchtime, again, when they've got like, eating a the sandwich, they'll be flicking through, or sort of three, four o'clock, so ready for when they're on the way home. Personally, um, I do it at the same time. Uh, I post at quarter past seven in the morning. Um, and there's a reason for that because I've dropped my little boy off at school and, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, quarter past seven, three to four times a week um, as a minimum, three as, a, as an absolute minimum, really. Um, but it's not just the post. It's, it's when people comment is engaging with those comments. So you know, it's great putting the post out there, but if you then get 13 or 14 or 15 people commenting on it and you don't reply to those comments, the algorithm won't really accelerate it. But if you get initial um, people replying to it, so three or four people and you reply to them, the algorithm will go, oh, this is interesting, and it'll certainly start to spiral. Yeah. Trevor's saying there, I and mean, I'll just make it quick over this, 15,000 connections, each post to put on basically 10,000 likes. It's all about connections. Absolutely right, Trevor. Uh, Mark Riggs says, basically, content is massively important. You never know who's watching. I'm going to use my slogan in. Simon knows what I'm going to say. Your next job is going to come from somebody on LinkedIn. That'll be on my gravestone. It really will. Yeah. Somebody you know is basically going to offer you a job on LinkedIn. Yeah. So, and, and Mark quite right. Uh, it's all about content. Uh, last couple, of, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, Helen Davis says, good morning, guys. Good morning, Helen. How the devil are you? Towngate. Uh, what did you need to do in order to be more relevant in 2021? I've identified the value is certainly more important as opposed to the price base. What is your views? Yeah, it's pretty deep, isn't value. it? Yeah, value add, without yeah. a doubt. If you can add value to somebody, whether it's a you know a, a prospective client who's got a problem and you can solve that problem, whether it's uh, a candidate that that needs advice and support, you know, yeah. I, I posted recently, oh, not recently, but last year about uh, CV writers um, and my my you know, and I got quite a bit of a kick in from it from CV writers actually. But yeah. you know, sending it off to a professional CV writer, I can understand why people do it, but actually, do they actually know you? Or yeah. should you be able to write your own CV and get other people within your network that truly know you to help and advise and, you know, but value, if you can, if you add value, you're always going to be in the, in, in the front runner. Yeah. Just last couple, Malcolm says, it's all about connecting to a wider audience, sharing information and getting your name out there. Absolutely right, Malcolm. It's about basically being seen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to be a shrinking violet and hope and pray that something will come through, you know, m- m- most job seekers are looking out there, look at their screens every day, and I suggest you don't do that. You go and get some exercise and and, and turn up, turn off screen off. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's all about getting your name out there. Um, yeah. One for you, Simon. Later, Mike Gardner says, "Can you post me details of the coffee club?" Email Simon, I guess, and basically we'll send that out to you through the Zoom link. Yeah, it's the same every week. So if you do get the Zoom link, uh, come and join us at nine o'clock. Suddenly do that. Uh, last couple of years, uh, Malcolm, I so agree. It started with 50 connections, now we've 1,500. Wow, okay, that's quite good. Uh, right, okay, so Simon, Simon, Simon Parsons, thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me try and get your details up here. So basically people have been asking for your email address. So... It's it's Simon at spconnect.co.uk. And I take the website is spconnect 
dot co dot uk yeah yeah and there's and, an info info at on the website as well but if you just directly email me or mark actually mark at spconnect.co.uk as well one of us will will absolutely come back to you okay no problem at all um simon it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today so i'm sure we've got some great content out there and you know um some some people learn some great things i mean we'll, we'll, we'll certainly get you back um oh, thank you very much Obviously, those people who basically want to catch this up, basically, it is the podcast, A Last Man Standing. It's M A W N. Go and get that from um, Spotify and all usual channels. Uh, next show is basically uh, next Tuesday. Gosh, we're going to come back with Hospitality um, Recovery, 12 o'clock noon. Uh, I think it's JBS. I can't be sure, but I have to get in the diary. I think it's JBS um, talking through there. Mr. Simon Parsons, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, just to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your content, thank you for your time today. Listeners, thank you. Happy 2021. Let's hope it's a better one. Yeah. But thank you very much, Simon. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nigel. Take care.